The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin. If you have any questions, then you can call in live right now. You can reach me at 1 877 927 6648. Again, that's 1 877 927 6648. And if you're outside the U.S., you got 727 445 1044. Again, that's 727 445 1044. Again, this is the Diagnostic Trading Hour, where we talk about how to maximize leverage, minimize risk, and be one step ahead of the markets. And uh, right now, we're just looking at a few different things, but uh, one of the things we always look at is just give you a daily market update. Where does everything stand? And right now, we have the S&P up 11 points. It's had a mixed bag of news uh, this morning, but apparently that news has helped it carry it up a little bit higher. And we are at that basically tipping point. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. If we actually do close up, then um, on the SPX index, okay, um, then we'll be uh, breaking those uh, September highs on a close, and that will uh, put us in that very high potential tipping point on the market. We've been waiting on this for days. The market's just been ridiculously flat. And uh, so we'll see how it ends up. We may get a, a retracement there at the end of the day, We're watching to see what happens. All right, we got the S&P right now up 11 points. We got the NASDAQ up 16. We got the Dow up 102 with the Russell up 9 points right now in the day. We got gold up $9. And we got copper moving a one and a half, up 1.5% on the day with silver up nearly 1% on the day. Looking over at Cornish down uh, 3 points, soybeans down 7.5. And we got oil up a buck 69. Oil has just been cruising this morning. Um, almost 2% up right now along with natural gas up 2.2%. And we'll see if that trend continues. But uh, basically, uh, based on that positive um, for natural gas inventory report, then, um, like I said, it's flying on up there. Almost as touched as highs. And, uh, I mean, just very, very close to hitting that high again from where it was right before the report. And uh, just a little bit more. And uh, I'll show you that right here on the report. Took off, came back. And uh, was able to hop in on the trade. So hoping that is for a little bit more. And uh, we get that. And then I'll be able to get out of that trade. It's up right now. I'd like to take it off for the ideal profit market there. But we've just got a little bit left. We'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, so we got natural gas right there. It is up, like I said, a whopping 2.3%. We got euro dollar up 76 pips. Pound dollar down 13. Aussie dollar down 22. US yen up a buck 46. US Canadian down 16, U.S. franc up 35. So really a whole mixed bag of candy right there. Um, with the dollar index overall, the dollar futures being down. But uh, overall, I mean, just, it's it's very, very mixed. And uh, you have the dollar stronger and weaker, depending upon what currency pair you're looking at right now. And so it's sort of a crazy day as far as how all that's playing out. And looking on over, let's see here, what do we got? So we had a few reports come out this morning. We have to go over the fundamentals. Make sure we talk about it. Now, one trade I talked about last night, um, which worked very well. Let me pull up a different chart for this one. And I'll go over here and pull this one up right here. I want to make sure I have the overnight data in here. And we'll back it out a little bit. And I'll turn on. Actually, we'll have overnight data automatically just because it's FX. Don't worry about it. Okay. So right here, I talked about, hey, we need to watch out for the Aussie dollar. They have an unemployment report coming out tomorrow. And uh, so this is a very cool way to trade, is to go in and wait for these major reports to come out and then trade in their direction. Um, and if they're dramatically different than what's expected, which it was, um, then you can trade in that direction. And one of the ways to do it with limited risk is to use Nadex. Okay? And uh, so I want to do a summary of the trade. I did this trade myself last night. Um, where you go in and the, basically the employment change and unemployment rate came out. The unemployment rate came in at negative 5.5, or the employment change came in at negative 5.5 thousand. They thought it'd be a positive 2.3. Last month, it was a positive 13.9. So that's a big uh, miss on not only the expectation, but also um, from the previous report that came out last month. 
And then the unemployment rate did meet the expectations of 5.4%, but that's still an uptick. And because they went down to 5.2 last month, they ticked back up to 5.4. And um, so with that right there, uh, that basically is really two negative things that happened on the report. And they revised the last report, which they said was 5.2. They actually revised it on this report up to um, 5.3. So they said, oh, unemployment was actually higher. And um, and it ticked up. So not only did it tick up last month higher than what they thought, but it ticked up higher this month, worse than last month. So it was basically negative news all the way around the board on the Aussie dollar. And so when I do that, now I go, okay, okay, so that's negative. And uh, obviously you can see the drop right there in the market, a little pullback. So now you got your chance uh, for potential trade. And there's a lot of ways to do these pullbacks. You can do them back to the same level. You can be going for a further level, like a deviation, depending upon how far it went. And... So one of the things I'm always teaching traders is, hey, use these deviation levels. They work. They work very, 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 very well. Okay? And uh, so if we're looking at the Aussie dollar, report levels get posted at 7 o'clock. Report came out at 7.30. So you had half an hour. Plenty of time. And uh, may not even got in until even later than that. But uh, so they came on out. And this is uh, central time on here. So 6.30. Um, 7.30 um, Eastern time. And, you know, you could have got in any time on the bounce back. You know, really just want to, you know, because they made it just may keep going. You don't get a chance to get in. But it does pull back. Where are you going to get in at? Well, you have a couple different levels. You have your half deviation, 1.0547. Well, that was right there. And it busted that level. Okay? It busted it really hard. I mean, it just went through it, busted it. Okay, so we obviously expect it to go lower. Negative news. And then, so we got two. We got a few other levels. We got 1.0537. Okay? That's not really that much further. And I want to say we stopped right at, yeah. So basically, it, if you're really in there looking at it, I mean, it was just like right here, just hesitating for a while. And a few minutes was a long time when a news report comes out. And then it, you see it hesitated there again as well. So showing us a really good breaking point. Okay, so where's it going to go? Again, we're waiting on that pullback. It breaks back above that half deviation mark. And we're going on over. We go lower, 1.0522. This is the part I was shooting for. All right? And uh, that's a one deviation. It's a negative one move. That's really how far we expect it to move. However, it even exceeded that expectation. It went down to one and a half, which was 1.04 nine six and it basically stopped like right around that level okay so you can see where it stopped right at that one and a half deviations came back up to one stayed there for a good chunk of the night and then as the u.s session came back in it did a massive retracement all the way back up so with that in mind how could you have actually traded this all right negative news all right we want to be short the aussie dollar drops down okay Seems like we're too late. Pulls back. Excellent. Gives us another chance <clears throat> to get in on the trade. So we go in. We go, okay, well, where do we want to get in? Well, I want to get in close to this negative one deviation level right here. Well, there's a 1.052 strike. Okay. So I went ahead and sold the binary up here for about $25 risk, maybe 25, 30 bucks risk. Bought it back right around 50 bucks. Wasn't the perfect one to one risk reward scenario. Um, I was looking for, you know, buying back around 50 to 57. Now, if I would have held it, it would have went longer. I just, I don't like watching the charts all night long. So, yeah, could have made more, you know, whatever, made money. So, I'm happy. But um, I basically put the order on. Took me a few minutes. Um, analysis and all, okay? Negative report, bounces back. All right, let's go ahead and let's throw on a short trade. Let's sell the one and then let's buy it back. Now, this is huge because this is a daily binary. It expires the next day. Okay, at three o'clock, if it goes back above my price level at expiration, I lose everything. So I don't wait, and I'm glad I didn't, because look, it fell down, way down. Like I said, could have made more, whatever. But then it came back up. If I didn't close the trade, I would have lost all of the money I put up at risk and not had a profit. So I was able to put the trade on and go hang out with my family, and put the take profit order in. I wake up in the morning, ah, sweet, made some money. Okay. So those deviations really help you set profit targets. The news can help you focus on things to focus on for trading. So I want to trade Aussie dollar. What direction? Report came out negative. Okay, I want to short it. Where to? All right, the deviation level. How do I limit my risk? I use a binary. I sell that strike or I use a binary. I buy that strike depending upon you know, good or bad news. And then I get out when it gets there. Well, you know, you can get out. If I sell, I'm probably going to buy back. Now, you could buy back. I'll get 53. I usually buy back at 57 because what really irks me is it comes down and it just doesn't quite touch it and it bounces off that's very annoying so um and then you don't get filled you know we've all been there that we're waiting for three more ticks and then we lose on the trade because we didn't take our profit okay or we give up like a whole bunch of the profit 
So I just say, you know what? I would rather get filled on all of them and not have to worry about it. So I buy it at 57. If I'm buying, I'll sell, like say I bought it at 20, I'll sell it at 43. Okay? So when I'm doing these trades and it hits my strike, I'm looking to exit at, you know, 43 when I'm selling back a bought one or exit on a sold one by buying back at 57. It's a very simple, very easy way to trade. Um, speaking of buybacks, uh, we got natural gas and just had a trade. Just took profit on that one over there. And uh, when we pull that up, I'll show you exactly how that works. And let's see here. Yep, profit closed. Sweet. Um, so on that position, just got filled on it and went in. And uh, let's see, let me pull up the exact trade and give you all the details. What we did is natural gas came out, all right, this morning. And it came out at, let's see here, what we got? We got natural gas released. Let me put the exact numbers for you. We got last night's up still. We pull up today's. Okay, natural gas came up at 10.30. And uh, the expectation was a negative 131 British thermal units. Um, and it came in at negative 148 British thermal units. Okay? So the market uh, rallied right off that news instantly because less supply, higher price. Pretty simple. Okay, same thing works on the oil. All right, flies up, does a pullback. All right, I'm like, okay, well, where did it go to? Well, it went up to this price level right here. And so I was like, all right, well, let's find a binary that's right near that price level. Okay, really simple. Or you could buy a spread. There's, you know, multiple ways to do it. And, uh, so price level was let's see one point let's see so three point five two zero was what I was looking at and I mean that's literally what we we just tipped it right there high three point five two zero all right so I'm like all right let's do this trade we'll go in and uh, we'll sell that one out but let's buy it for twenty bucks so I'll buy the three point five two now right now when I put this order in I mean it's priced around fifty fifty seven you know forty five fifty seven it's you know it's floating around. And um, I was actually looking at a lower one, but then it moved up even higher. And so I actually moved up my strike to 3.520. And uh, no orders filled yet. Put the order in at 20 bucks. It pulls back. All right. Finally, it fills me right here. I got filled on the order at 20. Looking at my trade log here. Let's see, buy at 20. Filled at 10.39 Eastern. So got filled right about here. Okay. And then... As soon as I get filled, I put in my take profit order to get out at 43. Remember I said when I buy, I like to get out at 43, like when it hits the strike. Okay, so when it gets back up to that, I want to make sure it gets me out. And um, so since the show started, got filled on the trade, got out at 43, right at um, 110 right there. So literally, right when it hit it, boom, filled, out of the trade, and uh, done. Very simple. Got to trade with the news in the direction, use the deviations, or... The uh, just the high off the news report worked really well. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and we'll be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or bar from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex symbol GPL or on the Toronto Stock Exchange symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, so uh, went over a couple good trades there. Showed you how he did a natural gas pullback trade on news. Talked about how to do an Aussie dollar pullback trade on the Aussie dollar. So uh, natural gas and oil, if I'm doing those, I'm usually looking for the highs off the news break. Okay. So, and, um, and that's if they do a pullback. Sometimes you don't get the pullback, okay? And, uh, and I want to be able again, I want to be able to get it for like ideally less than $25 um, if I can, um, if it's already, you know, bumping up on those higher deviation levels. So like natural gas, let's see here, we'll go in here and it was hitting, let's see, 3.470. I mean, right here was already at a, uh, so what deviation is that? That's a half deviation, so it blew through that one with no problem. And then 3.484 right there, it knocked through that with no problem, okay? And then it went a little bit higher up to 3.506 right there. Okay, literally, it went one deviation. A little bit more, basically pulled back to the half, okay, which is sort of what we were shooting for, and then shot back up. So since it already moved a full deviation, that helps out with going for that high since the pullback. Now, Aussie dollar, on the other hand, had only moved to 0.7 deviation, had it moved to full um, deviation, but it still pulled back to the half, and so we went for the full deviation. In both cases, we were going for the full deviation move. And that's I do like to go for full deviation, and it I really like it when the deviation lines up, uh, like on natural gas or oil, when the deviation lines up with how far um, it went right after the news. So that's you know it's sort of nice when that happens. You know, oil, like it had its uh, big move yesterday off the report, flew on up, gave you plenty of time, but you still had time to go in for that deviation. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and check out some of the other reports we got going on um, that happened this morning. We had building permits, they came in positive. And uh, so, you know, building permits a lot of times can cause some volatility on copper. It's been known to happen. And uh, as you can see, uh, let me go ahead, I'll drop off the uh, nighttime on here. And we'll go in. All right. 
And uh, you can see your reports come out. 837.30 Central right here. Just opens up. Boom. It takes off. Building permits came in basically right out of expectations. Um, and it came in, at, but it also came at 0.9 before, 0.87 before that, 0.89 before that. So that is a high number. It didn't meet the expectations. The expectation was 0.91. But the matter of fact that it didn't drop and that we're at least seeing a continued increase, sidewards, whatever, um, momentum in permits being issued in the previous month, that's positive. House is being built because this is focusing on residential building permits and, of course, all the copper you use when building a house. And so that leads, so that's another report you could use to trade copper with would be building permits. All right. And um, had a nice move. So if we go and we look at, okay, what about the deviations? Again, we post these every night, 7 o'clock, inside the uh, diagnostic members area there, and uh, TFNN. And you can go in and look at, uh, let's pull up copper. We had a move expectation on the upside. Three, let's see, all the way up to one was our full deviation expectation, 362. Well, it was already up pretty high right there. Wow, because we had some uh, nice moves already going on in copper. Let me back out a little bit. And uh, so we moved up to that, and then, I mean, it did, it blew through pretty much every single level. And uh, not all the way up, but uh, we had a 362.9. Uh, so we take that a little bit higher, 362.9. Okay, so that's our half deviation move. And uh, I think that's what we got a settlement there. And then we're going on up higher, the next level for uh, copper. Um, we got a full deviation, and then we move up to 364.5. Okay, so we move up. We're going even higher. I mean, this was insane. Okay, this thing just took off. And then we go a little bit higher, and uh, we'll, just, we'll trace it on up. 366.1 would have been a two deviation move, which is ridiculously high. Okay. So we got right there, and then uh, it looks like it may not want to go ahead and push on to that third deviation at 369.2, uh, which would be right up here, okay? So we're, we basically stopped right at two deviations, So and the market's closed. But, I mean, it did all that. The, the copper itself is closed. Um, but it did all that in a very, very short time frame, and went in, flew, took off, done. And, uh, I mean, you had a very short period of time, but you did have time. So, I mean, if you go in and you back it out, I mean, look at five minutes or one minute or whatever. I mean, it didn't do all of it in a minute, okay? So it was a positive news report for copper. It started moving up, okay? So you got a little confirmation if you're looking for it, and then it keeps going. And, again, you can do the exact same thing, and you could use deviation levels, things like that. You didn't get the pullback on this, but you did have time. And I talk about several different ways to trade news. One of those is strangling um, the binaries. The other one is straddling the spreads. The other one is getting in before the news directionally. The other one is getting in after the news directionally on a pullback. And the other one is getting in directionally if it gives you time to get in. In other words, it doesn't move the full move right away. So stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Just running through some of the reports. We also had a foreign security purchases come out of Canada. Uh, that did uh, that was a negative report for the Canadian dollar, so we saw a little rally in the U.S. Canadian. Pulled back, basically sitting at flat right now. Uh, a little bit later, we had unemployment claims as well. All right, actually, at the same time, we had unemployment claims. At the same, we had building permits, housing starts, all that coming in. And uh, so we put all that together, and we can check out what effect it had on the market. Well, earlier this morning, uh, they did like the uh, good report on the unemployment claims being better than they were on the expectations, better than they were on the last report. And I want to say better than they were the same time last year. Let me pull it up, and I'll check and see. So last year, we had 352. We just reported 335. So in all three accounts, unemployment claims were positive. So better than expectations, better than last report, and better than last year. So uh, that it was basically the number one driving factor on the news right there. I'm pushing that first rally up. Market hasn't had a massive move past where it did on the initial rally. Okay. And uh, that even itself could be a pullback news trade. Um, it's one that, I, honestly, I didn't take this morning. I guess I should have. Um, so I was looking for a potential gap fill, but we didn't get that one so far. We'll see what ends up at the end of the day. But it did also have that pullback and rally. So that was a potential trade that you could have done on that report. Um, looking on over, let's, see, let's pull out the deviations. Just see where the deviations are sitting at right now for the S&P. And we're looking at a move of 1459. Well, it obviously hit that. 
and uh, 1456, so it was just moving. Um, well, I'm looking, okay, and we go up to 1470, so that was the down deviations, I'm like, what? Uh, 1471 would be our first half deviation move, okay, so we hit that level like right out of the gate there, right on that news, really, uh, so we broke through the half deviation, then I move up to 1474.2, okay, and then of course we're going for an expectation of a one deviation move on most given days, which was 1477.9, so if you round that, you're going to get 1477.75 or 1478, uh, you know, depending upon how you want to round it up or down, just to bring it into the tick. So uh, I'd probably round down on the up deviation moves, I'd round up on the down deviation. So if it's a positive deviation number, round it down, so that way it's closer to you, okay? If it's a negative deviation, round it up so it's closer to you. So right there, basically stopping right at or within a tick, depending on how you want to look at it, the deviation. Um, and it did, I'm sure, tick up there. Let's show the bid. So perfect one deviation move, pulling back off that deviation move right now. So just be aware, the S&P has hit a full deviation move for the day. And uh, whenever that happens, I'm looking usually to start tightening if I am long, and I'm not right now, but if you are long then you should be looking to tighten your stops. If you haven't already, you should probably, I would have been out on this trade. So right now, um, if I'm long on the S&P. So because it hit the deviation, I tightened my stop, it came back down and hit it. And now it's just oscillating right there below it. And uh, now I could be looking for another, lo uh, another long. And if I did, I'd have to have a target, obviously above 1477.75. And I'd be going a little bit higher, be shooting for 1484.1, would actually be the next target. Um, right here for the market if it does decide to move that high. So it's been uh, pretty dismal and dead the last uh, few days. It's the biggest move we've seen. <laughs> Seems like in a while it's all exciting. But um, anyway, so moved up one deviation right there. We're going over at the NASDAQ. We'll check out how far it's moved on the deviation levels. So on the NASDAQ, we got to move up to a one deviation would have been 27.52. And let's see, did we hit that? We have not hit a deviation yet on the NASDAQ. Okay, so 20. 752 right there and then uh so right below that we're going 2744 all right we have hit that um, right at that 0.7 deviation level it's basically serving as a good a moment a little bit of a resistance point so and then uh 0.5 if we go back down just to see where that 0.5 level is on the nasdaq that brings us going to down to 2739 so right about here okay and then put in settlement right there. And uh, we can drop that one off there. So half deviation, 0.7, one full deviation. Like I said, it's, it is hesitating right now at the 0.7. If we move on over a little bit closer, we can check out the uh, Wall Street, 30, and uh, the Dow. And to move on upside on the Wall Street, 30. What do we got going on right there? Again, all these reports happening with the news this morning being uh, big driving factors. We had a pullback right there on the... Um, manufacturing report that came in the Philly Fed manufacturing did dampen it for a little bit, but apparently it was not enough to uh, keep the markets down. And uh, But we'll go ahead and look at Wall Street 30 on the move up. We're looking for a move to 13.535 right here. Okay, so it's just sitting right now at the one deviation level. So uh, if it does decide to move up further, we're going to move to 13.584 will be the next point at where we're going to be tightening our stops. And uh, let's see, and then if it goes past that, if we get just a crazy day, 13.633 would be on up here to this level. But uh, right now, broke through, should have a stop right around a low side of 13.529 on the long side of things, okay? So if you are long, that's definitely what I'd be looking at. And then um, looking on over at a couple other things, we got, let's see here, we got natural gas, already covered that one, uh, crude oil, we can see it's moved today, and it has just moved, like, massively overnight, and the move on the upside there, we had a move at expectation of positive deviation, 95.1, so, and I mean, it broke that before the day even started, and uh, so we can see, what if we keep on going up, 95, 96 would have been two deviations, so uh, it hit that, which I mean, like, this is just unheard of. So if we went up there, and then if we go a little bit further, uh, we could actually push it up 96.82. Okay, this would be three deviations. This is like a 3% chance it actually breaks and stays above those levels. So it's very, very rare it goes any further. It's at that two deviation. It hit it. It was resistance. It 
knocked through it right there. Now it's coming back down to that level. So uh, definitely would not be long on oil at all at this moment. And uh, I think it's definitely made its move for the day. It's exhausted. And you can see just the volume right there. They dumped out their contracts. So they're done. And uh, so I would not be looking to go long on oil at all at the moment. All right, checking that out. We'll go ahead and go on over to gold. On gold side of things. So everybody loves trading gold. It's a lot of fun. Um, move on up. 1695.3. And uh, let's see here, 1695.3 is my daughter's favorite thing to trade. And uh, it's also her favorite color. <laughs> so she's definitely a trader. And uh, six years old, so learning it right. But uh, so one deviation, boom, straight up to it. On that downside, it made a nice down move there. Let's see, it went down to about 16, what was that, 1680, 1666? And uh, so 1666, that's going to bring us 1671.1, just so you know. Right there, that's a negative one deviation. And uh, so a little bit lower, what actually, 1665, just a little bit lower than what we got, would have been um, actually uh, a one and a half deviation. But it moved down a deviation, got it back, and moved up another deviation. I mean, that's basically a full two deviation move. And uh, just crazy, crazy move on gold right there. And uh, I don't know how you call that, but uh, <laughs> I didn't trade it today. And uh, I would be very glad, I mean, just some of the people hopping in, this thing going short, and it turns around, I mean, and it spikes back in the other direction. See how fast it did that. Yeah, it, it, it took its time a little bit, but I mean that's that's just a that's a nice move. So um, nobody can complain about that one, unless of course you're on the wrong side of it. But again, trade gold on Nadex. Trade with the spreads. It's just like trading gold. Okay, um, and use a spread analyzer. It makes it really simple. And uh, they're closed now because they close when the uh, the floor closes. But uh, definitely would check out the spreads over on Nadex. That gives us gold right there. Looking on up for checking out <clears throat> silver. So on the silver side of things, moving on up 31.93. And that brings us up almost to a full deviation, 32.02. So right right about here. So it would have been a full deviation. 0.7 would have been a 30.188. And so 31.88 right there. Basically right to that 0.7 level for tightening your stop. Worked out really well. And then 0.5 for your stop on the way up, 31.78. And uh, right, yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> right there. So, and if we back out to at least, like I said, at least if I'm not, if I'm using, if I'm using minutes, I'm usually using 10 minutes. So, uh, breaks up, might actually probably got ticked out right there. So, it may got ticked out right before that last little bump. If it didn't, depending on how you trade, then you at least, you know, you got a few, a little bit more out of it. But a nice, nice good move on silver. And uh, we'll go down and check out some axe. So we got corn, not doing a whole lot, but we can look at it. And uh, see, did it move at least a deviation or half deviation down for us? 725. Yes, it did. 726.5. So right there was our half deviation move. That means all the shorts be tightening at your stops and uh, you'd be out. So that's about all you got <laughs> on corn. There's not a whole lot to say about it today. Uh, soybeans. So it had a nice run up first to 1448. Uh, 1448 does push us past. Uh, we had 1445 for a deviation level, then up to 1449, so almost to 0.7. So if somebody was trading it in overnight hours, I think it's a little crazy because that's already illiquid enough as it is. But if you're doing that, opens up, getting some volume early on, um, and then as the you know soybeans start opening up, gets going, falls back down. We got a low side of 1422 on corn which would put us, uh, let's see, 1427, right about here. So 1427, it's going to put us at a half a deviation, 1423. Okay, so right here, it's going to put us at a 0.7. So basically you got to move up to almost 0.7 on the upside, down to 0.7 on the downside. And uh, so that's a nice move. I mean, you got a full deviation from top to bottom and a little bit on top of that. And that's one thing I always tell people. Like we post these levels and we put what a deviation is. Okay? So we go in and we say, okay, soybeans. A deviation is 18 points. And so you go in and you can subtract 18 from the high. That's going to put you at 1448, 14, what, 30. Okay? So 1430 is a deviation down move from the high print. Okay? So you can also use the deviation from the high print from the low print when the market's reversing as another area to possibly tighten your stops and target. 
Um, and then let's see. Let's check out a couple currency pairs, and we'll wrap up looking at what you need to be looking at for what's coming up so we can ask other potential trades. And uh, so Euro Dollar moved on up, and it moved on up, getting a lot of strength and starting to piss off a lot of countries on the imports and exports. Currency war talks back in the rumor mill. Um Back up to a high, and Draghi's like, hey, we don't care about FX rates. That's, I mean, that, we factor it in, we think about it, but really that's not our concern. And uh, some countries are not very happy about that. But um, high right now, 1.3376. And uh, before I even go into this, I just want to look and see, where is our friendly Euro Frank? Yes, yeah, climbing on up. But uh, you can just see the, I mean, this that's just nuts. <laughs> but uh, talk about a trend. Okay, so back on to Euro USD. Okay, so right now we're over here. We got this high move on up here. We're looking for the Euro dollar to go up to potentially 33.60. We got it right here. That's our one deviation mark. And um, take it, enjoy it, be done. Okay, that's a full deviation. Any day you can grab a full deviation, you should be happy. All right, pound dollar. A little hectic. On the pound dollar side of things, flew up a little bit first, went up to a high side of 1.6038, and uh, 1.6038 was just above half a deviation, so which is good. You got your warning sign to tighten your stop if you're long. Um, you got stopped out. Then the thing just flew in the other direction early this morning, and uh, falling all down to 59.54, and 59.54, uh, 59.57 was a 0.7 level for tightening your stops. And right before that, you had another one. At 59.70, uh, so a little bit higher up here. So both of these levels told you to tighten your stops. It's good you did. Either way, you had a warning sign. Protect your profits. So it worked very well, whatever direction you were going. And uh, looking on over at USD yen, climbing and uh, just moving like crazy. Talk about currency wars. They're just they're doing some crazy stuff over there. Up to 89.90. People keep saying this thing can't go any higher. And uh, <laughs> I guess that means buy, right? Uh, when everybody's saying it can't go any higher, because it just went higher. See, we just broke a new high today. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to pull that up and show. Uh, but 89.90 right there, USD yen, 89.90 is over two deviations. 89.73 is a single deviation. Okay, so that's a double deviation move. Single deviation would have been at 89.09. That's how much they're manipulating this currency. It's just flying like crazy. So you get to tighten your stop there, which would have been like a stop here, okay? And then it goes up a little bit higher to 89.41. So tips right there. You probably would have got out um, unless you wanted to chance a two deviation move, which I, you know, wouldn't recommend. And uh, but with that, you got one and a half deviations. Very happy move on the day. And uh, we could even back it out a little bit more. It's always good to see, like I said, the 10 minute bars. So it's on 15 minutes. It makes it a little bit cleaner. Yeah, basically came out the exact same thing. So the low of this bar, stopped out, done for the day. Um, we'll get on over a little bit further. We got USD franc. So checking out the dollar franc card here. We got to move up to 93.59. And that puts us right out of deviation 93.60. So give it a tick, okay? So literally a one deviation move. Pulling on down. No surprises there. All right. Stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Just wrapping up, looking at a few more things and what we got going on. Uh, and we talked about a few of the currency pairs, and we talked about, you know, reports that are coming up you need to be aware of. Let's go ahead and check it out. Look at what we got going on tonight so you can be aware. We got a lot of China reports coming out tonight. That will move the markets. What it'll do, I have no idea, but it is GDP, industrial production, press conference, retail sales, and fixed asset all coming out of China tonight at 9 o'clock. So be aware. And again, uh, we're hitting that uh, dangerous level. Okay. Um, pull up the uh, S&P over here. Okay. And let's uh, just show you this so you're aware of it. Go into the dailies. Go over to the high, September. After this massive run. Okay, breaking this high. A lot of updates. A lot of updates in that mix. And I uh, would not be surprised to see it turn around. I know we've broken it on the futures and everything else, but I'm talking about the index, the broad market index that's following the stocks and have all the future stuff built into it. And uh, let's be aware, we just broke it. And that's, you know, I would not be surprised to see in the next week or two, this thing hold, especially with the implied volatility being as low as it is, there's not a lot of buyers left, okay? So looking for a down move here. Um, not today, not right now at this minute, but looking for a down move nevertheless. All right. So that gives us that trade right there. Just be aware, okay? And uh, like I'll be looking to possibly go in on some short weeklies on uh, Monday. But uh, so we got retail sales. Okay, pound retail sales. So that's your 
at your trade to check out tomorrow, okay, morning, if you're an early morning, or if you're a late night trader or whatever, uh, but 4.30 a.m., so bright and early, pound retail sells. And uh, let's see, a little history on the report here. They're expecting a 0.2% number to come in, okay? It came in flat at zero last time, which was worse than expectations. It came in at negative 0.8 the previous time before that, which was worse than expectations, okay? So you need to be aware of two things. One, the expectation is 0.2%. Two, last time it came in at flat, at zero, all right? And then three, the same time last year, it came in at 06 so if it misses all three of those marks, that's very negative for the pound. All right, so that's a short pound dollar trade at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. That gives you your thing to focus on, looking for a move of a deviation. Okay, if it's better than those numbers, which wouldn't be hard for it to, you know, potentially be, then we'd be looking for a move up to a deviation. And so, again, we'll post those deviations tonight at 7 o'clock. You get your free two-week trial right there at TFNN. And uh, but that that's your main trade. That's really the big last trade we have on currency coming up. We do have uh, the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report also being released tomorrow morning at 9:55. Okay, 9:55. Check that out. And um, but that's definitely the one thing that you want to be uh, looking at for you know early early morning if you are trading late at night. And let's see what else we have. And uh, we got over here. What we got? We got pull up the uh, the Frank. We got that one covered. I just want to make sure we got every single deviation level over, so that way you sort of know where the market stand as a whole. Oh, USD Cat with one left. Let's go ahead and wrap that up before the show wraps up. On in case you're trading the Canadian dollar, I did have some nice moves with that news this morning. Moved up to a high. The high was 0.9884. Well, 0.9888 within four ticks. Remember, I said I always give it a five tick. Okay, room there. So 0.9888 right there was uh, our level. We got 0.9884, you know, four, five right there. And uh, 9884. So 9884, 988 within that five ticks. So one deviation move. And then on back down, it is trying to get to this half deviation level. We'll see if it does it before three o'clock. All right, we'll be right back after this break. Or actually, we'll. New show will be back right after this break. Stay tuned. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.